Hey, welcome back to Blar. Today we're going to take a look at why Super Mario Brothers is a 10 out of 10 game. First of all, it came out in 1985. Two players, NES, arcade. Uh, really good port to the NES. I think it's, um, I think it's arcade perfect, right? If I remember correctly. So, of course, Mario came from Donkey Kong, and Donkey Kong Jr., and so on and so on. But Super Mario really put everything on the map because you have the iconic music, which you can hear. The whole thing is very odd, but the colors on this game are so, uh, I guess, inviting, maybe would be the word, or eye pleasing. So the palette's really nice with the blues and the greens. The other good thing about this game, or great thing about the game, is the gameplay is so solid. Anyone can pick it up. You can break things, collect coins. Then you have, um, well, I guess you have pathfinding because you can go down some of these tubes. Then you have secrets. So it's really cool to find out when you were a kid in the 80s, like stuff like, uh, where's that? That. There's extra life there. Flower power gives you some odd ability to shoot fireballs. You know, you're just a, a plumber in some kind of odd world. Of course, you get 100 coins, you get extra life. So I'm gonna do all that stuff. If people play Super Mario Bros., so let's go back and um, just revisit how good this game is. I've been playing a lot of retro, being on Twitch now. And uh, this game is just, um, you can come back to it to like ease out or just relax. Because, you know, you've beaten the game before, so it's not really pressure. And it has some secrets the timer if it's um, three, six, or one, if it ends on those digits, that's how many fireworks you'll get to see. So, first level is very cool looking, very easy, inviting. Then you go down to this level, more good music. Kill these things off, you can collect all the stuff you like. You want to do like a score attack. I don't think anybody does. The cool thing as a kid was to find out like... Oops. <laughs> Let's see, screw it up. Because you could technically kind of skip the level. I don't know if I can do it now. But you can go up top there and skip everything, which is nice. You don't have to deal with any of this. But then again, you need to come down here so you can get an extra life. So there's that. Take a different path, get more coins. And the whole game was pretty much fun to play all the way through. It gets a little frustrating if you like go world to world. By, I mean like 1 through 8 without using warp zones. Now, warp zones was another really cool thing to find out about as a kid. And you can go down there, continue a world 1 to 1, 3 to the castle. Or you can go over here, go to the warp zone. 2 has a water level. Um, 3, 3 is probably my favorite world. And then 4 is probably my first hated world because of a, the cloud guy that throws the spiny turtle things. So, we've seen the daytime, we've seen the sewers, which is this. So, we'll go here. So, the nighttime world always look cool to me. Very, I don't know, they're all very clean palettes. And then, I guess it's kind of maybe a puzzle to figure this out because you're like, how do you get up top there? So you gotta figure out, you go up here, you break those, and you're in business, and you can get the rest of them if you want. And I forgot, I thought there was something here, I can't remember. Yeah, there's extra life there. So, very cool to find the secrets, this will be a star. So you need to beat these new enemies, which are the Hammer Brothers. Those guys suck. Points. You can use this trampoline, but it kind of can throw you really off. So it's usually best just to try to do that. 
and yet another secret. Another odd world. <laughs> Jack and the Beanstalk, you go up into the clouds, get these coins, All these happy clouds here. And then I think this is the first part where you find out Mario can run gaps. See those gaps there? You can speed over them. You don't have to worry about jumping to each one. Well, that's about every world. The, you have the nighttime world, the sewer, the daytime world. World 6 is like a gray cloud level. One firework. castle level. They all look like this. You have the gray brick and the dark background. They're all just, of course, pattern based. Oops. Screw that up. There's some coins right there you can get. More classic music when you die. Most of us know that for an 80s kid. I have like no patience, so. So you usually want to keep your fire so you can just shoot Bowser. But, you know, it happens. So there should be coins somewhere around there. Maybe not. There is, but whatever. So you either jump over, go under, or shoot them if you have fire. It's kind of hard with Big Mario. So you can just sacrifice yourself and just run through them. I'm gonna try to time it. Let's see if we can time it. Nope. Doesn't matter though. Goes into the lava. Tell you about the mushroom person. Tell you about the princess who's in world 8. So you can continue on to do the rest of the worlds, or you can go here. There's more coins down there, but it's going to show you this other world. Well, other map area. Got some mushroom things. Let's go right through. So World 7 and World 8, they look like these worlds. And World 8's the final level, of course, so you can save the princess. But this level starts out in dark. I think when it goes to 6-3, it becomes cloud. Clouds, I think. So this level, to me, I don't want to say it was jarring, I guess, when I first saw it, but it was it's definitely unique. So I think it's the only one that looks like this. Because every, everything else is the daytime, your sewer levels, your castles, and uh, your water. I don't think you just speed jump this, I don't know. There's your mushroom up there that I can't get to. <laughs> That's a good stopping point. And then the end castle, and I think one other level has um, other patterns you have to do to make it to Bowser. So you can't just go straight through, you have to go like up, up, down, down, right, right. You know, you'll figure out a pattern. Then you make it to Bowser, save the princess, so on and so on. So the whole premise of Super Mario is very odd. It's a very strange world he's in, being a plumber, saving a princess from all these monsters that are either turtles or Goombas, or I guess Bowser's like a dragon turtle. I'm sure people know the lore more than I do, but from a, uh, I guess, um, brand new eyes, this game is very kind of, I would think it'd be very weird looking. Uh, I can't just restart, so I don't But the platform is solid. Oops. But it's not overly difficult. I mean, it progresses really well. 
Let's give this a little bit. Well, I, I think we've seen all the enemies now. I definitely wanted to show World 6 because I thought it looked pretty cool. Uh, I don't know how this thing works. Not like that. But it's just going to be a mushroom person, so. Just want to go over why Mario, Super Mario Brothers is a 10 out of 10 game. Still to this day. You can pick it up, play it, have fun. But, thanks for watching Triple R. Have a good day or night, wherever you are.